She was a unique talent with unlimited potential. You could just tell that she was going to be a star. But at the age of 30, Brittany Murphy mysteriously perished. Hollywood is a village. And once you upset the villagers, they talk and they gossip and they rumor. 32-year-old women just don't drop dead at home. It sort of makes everybody go, what? And they have blood on their hands. And I hope they wash them with very hot water because the way they treated Brittany Murphy when she was alive was terrible. He cut her off from the outside world, controlled her mind. In the relationship that came to define her. He suspected that his daughter had indeed been poisoned. Hey friend, welcome to my channel, Karina Lude, where we deep dive and break down the most iconic stars in history. If you're not yet subscribed, please be sure to do so and turn your notifications on so you never miss an upload. Now let's get into this video. Today, we are talking about Brittany Murphy. She suffered a very tragic loss at such a young age, only 32, but there's a lot of mystery and conspiracies surrounding her death. Many people believe that her own mother may have been the culprit along with her husband. Her mother was actually having a secret hidden affair with her husband. We are going to get into that. But first, I have to give you guys a little bit of background on who Brittany Murphy is as usual, some of her accomplishments in her childhood, so I can set the stage for this mystery. I first knew about Brittany Murphy from Clueless. Comment your favorite movie from her. My favorite movie starring her is Uptown Girls with Dakota Fanning. That was my favorite, but I loved her in Clueless, and I also loved her and just got married with Ashton Kutcher. Brittany Murphy had a difficult childhood growing up with her father and with a single mother who struggled financially. Murphy was born in Atlanta, Georgia to Sharon Kathleen Murphy and Angelo Joseph Bertolotti. Murphy's parents were of mixed descent. Sharon is of Irish and Slovakian heritage while Angelo is of Italian ancestry. But they separated when she was just two years old. After serving his country in World War II, her father was reunited with his mob connections. Yes, he was a mobster in his heyday, according to many articles, and became a major player in the local Italian mafia. This was one of the reasons that the mother separated from him. This was a very difficult decision for Sharon Murphy to make. At last, she decided to remove her daughter from the risky environment along with her two other siblings. It was around that time that Angelo, her father, conceived his second child with another woman. To make ends meet, her mother moved their family to Edison, New Jersey and worked hard to provide for them. Murphy revealed in interviews that growing up wasn't easy. Her mother often had to beg her to buy clothes at Kmart and the family dined on spaghetti for dinner every night. This experience greatly impacted Murphy's later life as she became committed to giving back to those in need, supporting homeless causes as mentioned by Glamour magazine in a 2003 article. Despite their financial struggles, Murphy's mother never stopped believing in her daughter's dreams of pursuing an acting career. In 1991, when Murphy asked Asked her mom to move with her from New Jersey to Los Angeles so she could pursue acting professionally, Sharon sold everything and moved out west with her daughter for support. Brittany Murphy was born on November 10th, 1977. Her parents were Sharon Murphy and Angelo Bertolotti. Angelo Bertolotti, he's New York City born and bred and wound up in Florida where he owned nightclubs. Angelo had a shady background. He was from the mob. Angelo was in and out of jail quite a bit and so the marriage didn't last. They divorced when Brittany was just two years old. 1980, fed up, Sharon took Brittany and moved to Edison, New Jersey. As they settle into suburban life, young Brittany starts to show a penchant for entertaining. Give us your name and what code you got to Hi, my name is Brittany Murphy and I go to Herbert Hoover Middle School. <laughs> she was very talented, yes, extremely talented. By the time she's nine years old, she's pointing at the television and saying, look, mommy, I want to be there. I want to be on TV. Soon enough, Britney's sights are set far beyond New Jersey. She heads to Hollywood with her mother by her side. If it wasn't for the age difference, you would almost mistake them for sisters. In fact, they considered each other soulmates. Sharon was pretty much Britney's pillar. They were more of a friendship as opposed to mother and daughter. While in New Jersey, Murphy studied at the Vern Fowler School of Dance and Theater Arts in Colonia. Starting when she was four years old, she took voice 
dance, and acting lessons until she was 13 years old when she moved to California. Brittany's nickname in school was Crack Baby due to her constant giggling in math class. She always loved to laugh. Brittany adopted her mother's maiden name as her stage name when she moved to Los Angeles to distance herself from her father's shadier dealings. She quickly started getting bit parts in both brand new shows and long-running comedies, though it wasn't always easy. Now, as far as her career, Murphy's breakthrough role was in her second feature film, the teen comedy Clueless, directed by Amy Herkeling, which developed a cult following. She followed this with roles in Freeway with Reese Witherspoon and Kiefer Sutherland in the independent comedy Bongwater. And in 1999, she had a supporting role in James Mangold's Girl Interrupted as a troubled psychiatric patient alongside Winona Ryder and Angelina Jolie. As an aspiring beauty queen and Drop Dead Gorgeous, she also voiced the character Luann Platter on Fox animated sitcom King of the Hill for the entirety of the show's run from 1997 to 2009. She was nominated for an Annie Award for voice acting in the King of the Hill episode Moving On Up. She began the 2000s with a leading role in Don't Say a Word alongside Michael Douglas, the TV adaptation of the novel The Devil's Arithmetic, 8 Mile, for which she received critical acclaim. She starred in Uptown Girl in 2003, she starred in the romantic comedies Just Married and Little Black Book and the critically acclaimed Sin City. Murphy's career also included work as a singer. She commented saying, My singing voice isn't like my speaking voice. I've just always kept it a secret and never taken credit because I wanted to learn how to work behind the microphone in a recording studio. And some of the singers don't even know it was me recording on their albums. End quote. She formed the band Bless Soul with actor Eric Balfour in the early 90s. Faster Kill Pussycat, a collaboration between Murphy and Paul Oakenfold, was released as a single on June 6, 2006, off of their album A Lively Mind. The song skyrocketed to the top of the Hot Dance Club play chart on Billboard, and in June of 2006, Oakenfold's home country of the United Kingdom also added it to their top 10. She dabbled in music again in the release of the film Happy Feet, in which she covered Queen's Somebody to Love and Earth, Wind and Fire's Boogie Wonderland. Murphy said about her character Gloria, oddly enough of all the characters I've played, Gloria is the most like me and she's a penguin. George Miller always wanted one person to do both the speaking and the singing. I said I can sing and I asked him to give me a shot. I don't think he took me very seriously because most actors say they can do most things." End quote. In 1995, Britney's fortune changes dramatically. Clueless was a blockbuster of a movie. So over the period of time, she got thin and went blonde and people took notice and she started getting bigger roles. Clueless was a huge moment for Brittany Murphy in her career, but she was still typecast as a fat, plump brunette. Other offers come fast and furious. Eight Mile, Sin City. She could play dumb. She could play smart, inquisitive, comedy. Now, as far as for relationships, Murphy started dating her just married co-star Ashton Kutcher around the end of 2002. Friends say that Kutcher wanted to go back to his bachelor ways after dating Murphy for seven months. Others have suspected that Kutcher's exit was at least partially motivated by her mother's interference in their relationship. So you can see that her mother Sharon was pretty involved in her life, right? Would you guys consider her a stage mom? I don't know. In a private Jewish ceremony in Los Angeles, Murphy married British screenwriter Simon Monjak in May 2007. And according to Rolling Stone, Monjac, or Monjac, cut Britney off from all of her old friends and lifelines as their relationship progressed. According to several people interviewed in the film, he took over her email account and confiscated her phone and assumed complete control of her money. But he wasn't content just to rule her personal life. Not long after they married, Monjac fired Britney's entire professional team and became the sole manager of her career, negotiating her intimate scenes. One director said, she refused to do a planned kissing scene until he threatened with an earshot of Monjac to have her replaced and even doing her makeup on movie sets. Yeah, he was even doing her makeup. In the documentary, What Happened to Brittany Murphy, cast suspicions on Murphy's mysterious husband, Simon Monjac. The British-born filmmaker was known for being a pathological liar who allegedly claimed to be a billionaire. He would routinely claim he survived terminal spinal cancer with medicine that contained shark fins. Monjac spent three million of Britney's money in three years. He lived off this girl who had worked her heart out for every penny she had had, a former associate says. Rolling Stone continues by writing, multiple people interviewed 
interviewed for the film reported seeing Murphy high and glassy-eyed on set and at industry events, alleging that she and Monjac would stay up all night doing downers and then take stimulants in the morning to stave off exhaustion. It was during these late night binges that Monjac would encourage Murphy to participate in creepy photo shoots where he would dress her like a doll, says one People magazine reporter. The Los Angeles County coroner also reports in a film that he found 90 prescription bottles on Monjac's bedside table the night of Britney's death, several in third party names like Lola Manilo, which he presumed were aliases. And according to New York Post, filmmaker Allison Burnett recalls first meeting Monjac at a dinner party in 1999 where he lied about owning 17 Ferraris, dating Madonna, and surviving terminal brain cancer thanks to an experimental treatment involving shark fins. It was apparent, Burnett says, that he was using the woman he was dating at the time for her money. Years later, when Burnett saw that he was involved with Murphy, he was horrified, saying, and I quote, I couldn't believe that this bottom-feeding sociopath had actually worked his way up the food chain to someone who actually, who's actually a legitimate artist, the filmmaker says in the show. Burnett went so far as to call her agency trying to get them to stress to Murphy that Monjac was a compulsive liar, but he says the word coming back was that her manager had tried doing that and had gotten fired as a result. Despite the many concerned people, Murphy married Monjac in 2007. Monjac reportedly went to great efforts to conceal his shady past from his new bride. Elizabeth Ragsdale was engaged to him before he was involved with Murphy and says he manipulated and isolated her, claiming he had cancer so that she'd get pregnant. In the documentary, Ragsdale says he threatened to take away their son if she revealed herself to Murphy, saying, and I quote, the stakes were a lot higher with him being married to Britney, she says. He didn't need anybody to know that I was out there with his son. I know why Britney chose Simon. He worked his spell on her and she fell for it, like I did. Murphy's once thriving career slowed after the marriage as rumors swirled around town that Monjac made it difficult to work with her. She had a tendency to date her leading men. When she was on 8 Mile, she dated Eminem. She did a movie with Ashton Kutcher and she ended up dating Ashton too. The relationships really don't go anywhere. She dates them for just a few months and she doesn't really find love. But in 2006, she encounters a man who will change her life forever. Simon made a name for himself as a creative force behind George Hickenlooper's Factory Girl. Simon and Brittany start dating. And within a year, they get married. Right off the bat, Sharon moves in with them. Now, as far as her health, Murphy bought Britney Spears' former Hollywood Hills home from her in 2003, a place the singer had shared with ex-boyfriend Justin Timberlake. Murphy's feelings toward the home deteriorated over time and is said that the home was haunted because Britney Spears had this root worker come into the home to kind of cleanse it, but then she instead opened portals, like, you know, whatever. And Britney left all the furniture and everything in the house and didn't want nothing to do with it and just rushed out because she felt like whatever portal was open it was trying to push her down the stairs and Murphy moved into the house fully furnished from Britney's belongings and just wasn't feeling too good about the house. Murphy always insisted that they stay at the Beverly Hills Hotel whenever they were returning from a Hollywood job or event but Monjac always said no she'd rather go to the hotel than to go home but no he wanted to enjoy his large house right. In the early 2000s Murphy lost a large amount of weight which led to rumors of a coca-cola addiction if you catch my drift and in 2005 murphy disputed such claims to jane magazine saying no just for the record i have never tried it in my entire life end quote the los angeles fire department responded to a medical request at the los angeles home shared by murphy and monjac at 8 a.m on december 20 of 2009 it appeared that she had passed out in a restroom on-site CPR attempts were made on Murphy by responding firefighters. She went into cardiac arrest on the way to Cedar sinai Medical Center, where she was pronounced dead at 10.04 a.m. She was only 32. The following day after her passing, an autopsy was conducted, and according to a report released in February 2010 by the Los Angeles County Coroner's Office, the manner of death was accidental and the cause of death was pneumonia with secondary factors including severe iron deficiency, anemia, and multiple substance intoxication. The coroner determined that Murphy had taken a number of different medications, both over-the-counter and prescription, with the most likely intent being to treat a respiratory infection. Hydrocodone, acetaminophen, methamphetamine were all present in elevated levels, but they all 
were perfectly legal. Given our current state of weakness, the possible adverse psychological effects of elevated levels of these medications cannot be discounted, according to the report. Murphy was laid to rest in the Hollywood Hills at Forest Lawn Memorial Park on December 24, 2009. Simon Monjac, Murphy's husband, and Sharon Murphy, her mother, claimed in January 2010 that neither Murphy nor her mother used substances or alcohol, and that her death was caused by a heart condition called mitral valve prolapse. The documentary What Happened to Brittany Murphy provides some insight into her transformation with friends and family of the actress claiming that hearing her agent say she was huggable but not effable was the final straw that made her decide to drastically change her appearance. In an interview with Interview Magazine, Brittany recalled the embarrassing incident. The Los Angeles County coroner ruled that Brittany's anemia was a contributing factor to her death and the film shows that her extreme thinness was the likely cause. Instead of receiving encouragement at home, Murphy received criticism from her husband, Monjac, who allegedly pushed her forward as cosmetic surgery and a diet throughout their marriage. She clearly wasn't eating if she had such severe anemia. The coroner tells the filmmakers, someone might ask, how did this happen? During Brittany's final days, she became gravely ill, but Monjac allegedly refused to take her to the hospital. As soon as Britney's passing leaks out to the media, they swarm. Hollywood has been stunned today by the death of a rising young star. We interviewed Simon within a couple hours of Britney's death. He told me she was sick, she had flu symptoms. There was a little strange in his mannerisms. People will react in many different ways from crying or just being silent, but he appeared confused. He appeared to be under the influence of something. He wouldn't sit down. He just kept pacing back and forth and was kind of stoic and kind of rambling. He had said that he did not want an autopsy, which I explained to him. We do autopsies anytime there's a death unless they could provide a religious objection or a court order. Why was Simon so dead set against the autopsy? She's a 32-year-old woman who should be very healthy. 32-year-old women just don't drop dead at home. When we searched the bedroom, we found approximately 90 different prescription pill bottles in Simon's name on his side. There were so many different kinds of heavy-duty drugs, things for anxiety or depression and very habit-forming painkillers. It was no small coincidence that people started to notice her erratic behavior at the very time that she got with Simon Monjack. If you wanted to get to Brittany Murphy, you had to go through Simon Monjack. Another professional in Hollywood, put it more bluntly, she called him Satan. Her friends were saying that he would control who she talked to. There were certain managers and agents he didn't allow her to speak to. He was telling her what roles to take. The swirling rumors soon cast Britney's death in new light. People actually started to suspect that Simon Monjack might have had something to do with Britney's death. Throughout his career, he made a lot of enemies and people just really generally didn't like him. He cut her off from the outside world. He kept her cloistered in that home, plied her with things, controlled her mind. He's bad news. Simon Monjack was a charlatan, a con man and an extortionist. Simon Monjack wanted to get rich quick scheme. He was a sociopath. It could be that he saw the dollar signs of Britney and that's all he needed. The final results of Britney's autopsy was she died of pneumonia. She was anemic and had an overdose of over-the-counter medications. Brittany's death could have been prevented, in my opinion, had they taken her to the doctor or a hospital instead of just feeding her cough medicine and, and different non-prescription medications. In an attempt to defend himself, he appears in a nationally televised interview alongside Sharon Murphy. He begins with his account of Brittany's death. You didn't want an autopsy at first? No, I didn't. To us, it was such a shock. This pristine body that was curvy in all the right places so and the skin like skin. silk. And I, how could I say in front of a mother, cut her up? How about stories that you are a Svengali, a controlling factor? Svengali, uh, I should be so lucky. And Sharon Murphy strikes people as a little odd. What was going on inside that house? And he actually invited Radar Magazine to come in and tour the death house. Yeah, you're the first people to ever see the infamous bathroom. You can see my wife had a penchant for cosmetics. He showed the death room, which was quite tragic and a bit terrible. This is the little doggy couch where she actually fell. He's smoking a cigar while they have him on video. It's smacked of this nightmare episode of Lifestyles and the Rich and Dead. Lots of Louis Vuitton, lots of Chanel Gucci. It's not just disturbing, it's sick. 
we just had so much fun. It was just crazy. Playing the piano and she'd be lying on, on, on the floor falling asleep. The body of Monjac was discovered on May 23rd, just five months later, in the same house in the Hollywood Hills where he was living with Britney Murphy. So Britney Spears' house. So people were like, yeah, this house is cursed. The cause of his death was listed as acute pneumonia and severe anemia. In the coroner's report, initially, the Los Angeles County Department of Health suspected toxic mold in the home as a contributing factor in the deaths. But Los Angeles Assistant Chief Coroner later said there was no indicators that mold was a factor. A Hollywood pharmacist allegedly suspected Murphy and Mojak of doctor shopping. If you don't know what doctor shopping means is when celebrities look for doctors that will write them prescription pills without actually being sick to feed their own addictions. This Hollywood pharmacist came out and suspected that Murphy and Monjac were doctor shopping in which patients obtain their medications from multiple doctors. The couple avoided doctors as much as possible for fear that their health issues would become publicly known and harm their careers. The pharmacist for his part was worried about the fallout if something were to happen to them. Months before Murphy's untimely death, he told Monjac he could no longer fill their prescriptions. So Angelo Bertolo Lodi, Murphy's father, filed a petition with the Superior Court of California in January 2012 asking for a warrant to urge the Los Angeles County Coroner's Office to provide hair samples from his daughter for third-party analysis. Berto Lodi stated in November 2013 that a toxicology report suggested his daughter's death was a result of deliberate poisoning with heavy metals like antimony and barium. The accusation was called a smear by Sharon Murphy, and after seeing the results, he was certain that someone had poisoned his daughter and son-in-law. Eventually, his ex-wife Sharon Murphy became the prime suspect. Almost five months to the day after Brittany Murphy perished, her mother Sharon, yet again, dials 911. What's the problem? What happened? My son in law, he stopped breathing. At 9 45 p.m., Simon Monjack is pronounced dead. I responded and found it strange to be in the same house five months later. We recovered some more prescription bottles from the bedroom in his name and additional names. Some of the prescriptions were made out to get this Sharon Monjack. And she kept saying that he died of a broken heart. And when I asked why was her prescriptions in that bedroom, she advised me that they shared the bed because they were comforting each other for the loss of Brittany. I believe that Simon and Sharon were definitely doing the dirty. The coroner concludes that the cause of death was acute pneumonia and anemia, just like Brittany's. The media is scratching their heads very eerie because the circumstances are so similar. A, a surprising death. Sure. Everyone is shocked about this. How is it that these two individuals, husband and wife, one is 300 pounds, the other is 115 pounds, that they both succumb to the exact same ailments? So you have two people in one house who die five months apart, exactly the same causes. I mean, how much more weird could this be? Angelo gets some extensive research done on the cause of Brittany's death, pneumonia, but especially anemia. And he discovered that some people who died of acute anemia were actually found to have died of arsenic poisoning. Angelo also discovers that the L.A. coroner's office never tested Brittany's hair for toxic substances. So he petitions to get a sample of her hair so he can send it to an independent lab. The results from the Colorado Toxicology Laboratory were very surprising. Oh, off, off the chart. They show 10 heavy metals at significant levels that several instances are well beyond the levels permissible by the World Health Organization. The effects of heavy metals are dizziness, sweating, cramps, coughing, lethargy, all of which Brittany had suffered from leading up to her death. These findings raise a lot of questions. What exactly was going on in that house? He suspected that his daughter had indeed been poisoned. Dr. Wecht and Angelo attempt to commission further tests on Brittany's remains, but they run into a problem. Sharon Murphy says absolutely not to exhuming her daughter's body, and this strikes some people as awfully odd. Why wouldn't a mother want to know the exact cause of her daughter's death? I'm quite sure Brittany was poisoned, yeah. Poisoned by her own mother, yes. So that's what I think. So Angelo actually believes that Sharon poisoned her daughter. Brittany and Simon, we're going to start a new life perhaps have a child. Sharon is about to be discarded. Angelo became suspicious because Sharon is not the type of person 
that would take that lying down. Few people know about the private struggles Brittany Murphy had been going through in the months leading up to her death in 2009. Murphy had been providing care for her two housemates, which was her mom and her husband. Sharon, who had battled breast cancer twice, is now experiencing the debilitating pain of neuropathy, so she was under a lot of pain. Mon Jacques, Murphy's husband, was having frequent seizures. Whenever he had a seizure, Brittany Murphy had to restrain him to keep him from hurting himself or choking on his tongue, and he was pretty heavy set a pretty big guy and she was very petite so can you imagine her last weeks were filled with constant anxiety and fear a report claiming that Brittany Murphy's mother and her husband, Mon Jacques, shared a bed after Murphy's death is one of the more outlandish claims to have surfaced in the wake of Murphy's death. A post-death photo shoot featuring Sharon and Mon Jacques holding hands and staring into each other's eyes looked like parents grieving as opposed to a husband and his mother-in-law, one insider says. A joint interview on Larry King Live in which both Mon Jacques and Sharon Murphy appear extremely disoriented did not help to quell rumors about their bizarre connection. When King presses Monjac as to why he didn't want an autopsy on his wife's body, Monjac says, this pristine body, curvy in all the right places with skin like silk, how could I say cut it up in front of her mother? End quote. And according to the New York Post, after Murphy's death, things got more bizarre. Monjac attempted to prevent an autopsy on her and asked his late wife's contacts for thousands of dollars for a foundation in her honor. He literally went through her phone and asked all her famous friends to donate to this foundation in her honor asking for thousands of dollars and a lot of people say when these celebrities die and their families do these foundations oftentimes it's just a money grab in this case this was in my opinion definitely that but who knows maybe he was grieving but murphy's mother sharon had lived with the couple and continued living with monjac after her daughter's death when rylan visited the home she says it appeared the two were sharing a bed and the older woman behaved quite oddly and to elaborate she said murphy's mom was submissive and almost subservient to monjac in a weird way you know you know what I mean? A little too submissive if you catch my drift. Now, I don't know what to think, but in my opinion, these are just the facts that I read to you guys. So I want to see what you guys think in the comments. What do you think happened with Brittany Murphy? She has so much potential. She was so funny. And I just think her life was lost way too soon. The people around her failed her. And no matter how you slice it, you can say that Monjac probably wasn't the greatest person to have in her life. And her mom somehow, if you were that close to your daughter and you were that involved in her life, then you know this man wasn't the best person to have in her life. And for you to still live with him after and be submissive to him. But maybe he was also violent and maybe he was supporting the mom and was providing for her and she felt like she had to be submissive to him in order to continue being provided for because she was sickly she was in a lot of pain she could not work she just overcame cancer so who knows why she stuck around but I, I don't know if I could be around somebody that was this toxic towards my child but he was a very manipulative person so you never know he probably was able to manipulate Sharon comment below your thoughts what do you think but comment also below who else would you guys like to see a video on I love you guys so much thank you for tuning in and if you like the music you're listening to the link is in the description until next time